Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. If you're passionate about the tactical skirmish game that brings together strategy, lore, and creativity, you are in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and stay updated with our latest episodes. If you want to support the show, check out our Patreon. Your support means a lot to us. Follow us by using the social media links in the podcast description for all the latest news, and be sure to leave a review to let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Here's today's episode. All right, y'all. I just got back from the World Champions of Warhammer event in Atlanta, Georgia this weekend. Um, Travis was there as a TO. I was there playing um, Phobos. Ended up going 6-4 and four throughout the event. Not bad. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, got the Best in Faction Phobos Award is pretty exciting um the episode for this week is a collection of interviews that we grabbed throughout the whole event um we had a little bit of time travis and i where we listened back to it added a little bit of commentary um but it, it's a little bit scrambled just in the name of getting it out there pretty quick the first interview is right after round two on day one all right it is day one just after round two um, I'm here with Charlie, who was playing Corsair Voidsguard. Um, how are you today? I'm I'm fine. Just uh, maybe a little bit demoralized, but uh, yeah, it's okay. We can we can do it. Yeah, uh, it was a pretty tough match with you. Yeah. What was uh, what was the the biggest moment you think? Uh, off the match. Yeah. Uh, like for me, I think it was a double kill with the. Basically, the only the really good play I did that uh, I opened the door with my Fedark. Like he, yeah, he opened the door and then he uh, he did the fight and then he shot one of your guys and killed both. Yeah, it was the hatchway fight where the yeah, hatchway killed fight. two Reaver warriors in one activation. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, and then I think yours was maybe like. On the same situation, like mm -hmm. where you killed the current hunter and the pistolier, yeah. like that double kill was really good too, because my pistolier is basically my best piece uh, is, yeah. in shooting. Like it's better than you than the heavy gunner, honestly. And then my current hunter is one of my best pieces on melee. Yeah, the it was super super lucky that that pistol shot turned into a full blown kill because that is not at all close to guaranteed. Yeah, it was like. Five crits, right? No, like four crits. Sorry. Yeah, or, like, like three two crits, crits and two hits. Yeah. Uh, it was like yeah, it was like zero misses, and then it was really tough. Yeah. And also, I didn't have the what do you mean? Uh, my misfield. I already wasted it on my leader, like really early. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had uh, one guy on guard, so I opened. I got shot by the guard. He saved everything because he wasted the misfield, and yeah, then you shot me. And the pistolier was gone. How's your your round one? You said was against uh, Brood Brothers. Yeah, my round one was against uh, Brood, Brood Brothers. Uh, it was tough too. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing with Corsairs, it's they have a pretty decent matchup against elites because mm -hmm. uh, you know power weapons, a lot of damage, AP two, uh, and as we can maybe sometimes trade one to one. Yeah, uh, they're super you, fast. They're so super fast. But they're really a glass cannon, so you can't really afford to make uh, any mistakes that cost you minis. Or, yep. like, a double kill can be, be really tough. So the thing is, against Brood Brothers, they're a horde team. So I don't really have many tools for double kills mm -hmm. in my arsenal. Like, I have some guns with Torrent, but really Brood Brothers does play really cagey. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of uh, conceal guys. So, I didn't really have clear shots. And the, uh, you know, the guy took uh, the Magus. That Is she that the has... one that ignores injury? Uh, is, uh, yeah, she ignores uh, piercing. Like, makes makes the team ignore piercing. And then she has a psychic uh, psych attack that uh, 
She obviously can shoot on silent because it's a psychic ability. And then she can drop visibility from any guy. Yeah. So uh, with a CP, obviously. So basically every turn, like she planted herself on the second floor. on No, third floor, I think. Yeah, yeah. all the way up on the Yeah, on all the way up on Balkus. So she was on conceal there and she was basically untouchable. Just and then just the basically map. she killed four guys, like one at each turn. No, like three. Yeah, because turn one she didn't. But it was definitely really rough because, you know, she also uh, she uh, could spend one APL to reduce mine to one. Yeah. So she just did like two morals, then two up morals, two up morals, two up morals. So and my guys have eight. Yeah. So, yeah. The math. Yeah, it's pretty lucky to, to get all the way to eight, though. I mean, because well, is, isn't it wouldn't it be on three up? No, it's in twos because uh, she oh, reduces, reduces the APL reduces to the one. APL. Oh, jeez, yeah. Yeah, it, it's really rough. But, you know, that's that's how it works. And you gotta accept it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think I could have tied uh, if I'd done a, a little different move because I had, like, two minutes left and there was the center objective and I went to capture it and really it was my fault because I didn't really read well the... The great up. <laughs> I thought if you captured it, it kept captured, but you had to capture it and then still control it to point. Yeah. So, yeah, she died at the end of turn and I didn't point. So, yeah. It's been good, though. It's been really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you at Worlds last year? Uh, no, no. This is my first time here. This is my first time here also. Oh, cool. Yeah, and in your way, we're a pretty small community. Uh, like, we're growing, mm -hmm. but... Still pretty small, so we got uh, two uh, guys playing today, and yeah, it's been really fun yeah. for now. What's your favorite uh, secret tech for Corsairs? Secret tech for Corsairs. Okay, so now on third edition, mm -hmm. the Shade Runner is really good. Yeah. So blinking through walls and all that. Yeah, like he can teleport, and also the thing is. As uh, you know how on counteract, you can only move two inches. Okay, mm -hmm. so the teleport, how it works, it says that you don't move. You instead place it seven inches away. So you can do a counteract and move seven inches. Oh, jeez. So you could, like, technically on... I wanted to do it against you, but you were too far away from the wall. You can, uh, like, slicing attack and come back. And maybe cap a point or something. Yeah, slicing attack counteract is huge. It's hilarious. And yeah, it's it's really fun. I don't know if it comes up that much because you know with nine ups, uh, it's it's kind of an awkward mom number. It's not that many and it's not not little. So but you have to like aggressively trade and then do crazy counteracts like that to yeah. swing it back. Like when yeah, like I had a game against uh, legionaries like while I was practicing on on tabletop. Mm -hmm. uh, and like it started really rough he got like a double kill with the with the psychic at attack and blast mm -hmm. yeah and uh, then I brought it back because I got counter attacks and I did some <laughs> slicing counter attacks and counter attacks with the gunner and got a fuck ton of kills and we tied we ended up tying like uh, I was losing like up until third the third turning point yeah they're they're they can come back. It's hard. It's it's thing is uh, with corsairs. Yeah, that's what I told you. Like they're good against elites, but they're not that good. Like where it's an out of win. Like yeah. Well, the the state of game is kind of weird. Yeah. Now it definitely is. Like uh, warp Cohen and legionaries are really tough. Yeah. But I can beat them. Like. It's there, the possibility. Yeah. It's not like against, uh, I don't know, no, no offense, but like no. Medgard. Yeah. It, they're completely screwed. They're in a bad, they're in a really tough spot. Yeah. Poor Medgard. Uh, my, my brother plays them. He, he's not in a good spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can kill elites, but it's not that top, that great of a matchup. And then I'm scored. It's kind of complicated. So... We don't really have any really good matchups, at, at, at least, uh, let's say, against you, Phobos. It's kind of a good matchup, but yeah, today the, the dice didn't 
didn't really work that well, and you played really well. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's a couple of my favorite Corsair tech pieces I want to shout out. Um, one of them is you use Plunders, I think it's called. Is that the one that lets you dash? Yeah. And then charge from there. So like, oh, if you yeah. have initiative, you can just like Plunders around the corner and then do a long bomb charge and just like missile into people, which is just like totally crazy. Um, and then similarly, the Kernite Hunter, the dude with the bird, uh, if, if I like activate someone with a conceal order, for example... That, that you're watching because I'm like, I'm not going to go engage because you're going to ruin my day. And then I move and then you move seven inches closer and then immediately activate and do a nine inch charge from there and just go somewhere completely outrageous. Like, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the hunter is so good. Like, he's so fun. He can block and no, he can, he can do like, he always fights first. That's so good. Yeah, just zip and the, the and free crazy. charge. It's it's really great. Uh, today I didn't really use it that well because uh, I forgot it that you to can't. Into the dark in general. Yeah, you can't measure through doors, through closed doors and, and walls. Uh, that was m my bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'm thinking of any other techs. Uh, well, uh, the like maybe using the Felark and positioning him on a good spot on turn one and. Just getting him unengaged, so if you open a door or come up, I can shoot you. And he has a really good gun. Yeah. He he can kill stuff. Yeah, like especially like if you hide him in like a little like L shaped ruin and someone and you know someone might want to run up on you and shoot you, and then he's just like nooked back, like tucked back in the corner with his like interrupt shoot. Um, then if someone tries to run up and shoot someone else, he'll just interrupt and shoot them. And it's kind of like a nice way to protect some pieces that would be like staged forward in an L like that? Well, another one is like on Volkus, uh, you can get your sniper on the last floor, yeah, uh, turn one. Because So you use the Shade Runner to place him on the, fir on the first floor, yeah, or maybe even second. I don't know, you, you, I had to measure. Oh, it and you, you, then you use Warpfall, yeah. and then you climb. Okay. Yeah, it, or maybe you could use even a gunner. Would it be possible to jump or, or to teleport straight up there and then warp fold straight up there? Yeah, uh, I'd have to measure. No, because I think the last floor is six inches from the yeah. from the floor. So you would need to either climb with the, with the Wayseeker or... Yeah, you'd need to climb to uh, with the Wayseeker because it's five inches from the Wayseeker. Yeah. Yeah. But still, like, yeah, you can't really shoot. No, maybe. Wait. Like, if you really position it well, you could pull it off. It's, uh oh. That'd be pretty spicy, yeah. Yeah, that'd be that pretty good. Definitely something I say, like, go, like, take a peek at some of those maps and. Like, cook, sh uh, shoot with a sniper a turn bit. one while concealed is. That's good. I think I got a gripe with the sniper. Like he lost the the balance thing. Like uh, he when when he shoots, he just uses one APL, and then you just wasted. You don't really use it in anything. Maybe you could shoot a smoke, like to a technical spot. But apart from that, it's not it's not really that good. Like you could you you use it in some matchups, like against uh, eight wounds. He's good. Uh, but then, like, against elites, doesn't really work because you need to be really lucky. I really wish he was, like, the <laughs> like the crude one where he has oh, ignore, obs ignore Obscure and Lethal 5. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah, the crude sniper is really good. Hmm. Oh. Um, okay, well, do anything we, else? Uh, do we know... Well, we've got plenty of time, so it's going to be a while before the next round comes out. Hmm. Um... Yeah, I think I'm probably going to wander around and check in with the 40k people a little bit as well. Yeah, I got um, a friend that's playing. Yeah, we got one more Uruguayan guy. He's playing 40k. Yeah. And I'll check up on him, how he's going, how he's doing. Sweet. So, yeah. Yeah, well, Been a pleasure. For, thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me. And, uh, and thanks for the game. Uh, good luck on the future games. Good luck to you, too. All right, well, editor's note. We're sitting here at, uh, in the hotel room just uh catching up a little bit on this podcast snippet talking about a little bit about counterplay to the sniper nest on volcus 
Um, warp folding a sniper into the sniper nest. What do you think, Travis? Pros. You have a sniper in the sniper nest. It is very annoying. It can theoretically hit someone with accurate two. Cons? You actually want to roll crits, so the accurate two is not great. And you lock up a piece in the sniper nest. Corsairs do have a little bit more play compared to some of the other teams with permanent snipers because you can get there on turn one, so you project power on turns two. You don't need a ladder compared to some other teams. And for staging, you're using two operatives on a nine operative team to potentially produce the ability to push out power for three turns. Yeah. However, he's not moving. He was perma silent. I'm I'm always a fan of just give me another warrior with a power sword. Give me give me more like pressure, another murder piece to just shove down the enemy's throat as opposed to this like passive pressure of a, of a, the sniper nest. It is good, but I prefer power swords. And being stuck in the nest is definitely a downside. On Volcus, everything is heavy, so you really should not get shot until after you've gone to shoot. Especially against the sniper nest, because it can only see what it can see unless you're trying to get it to go do something. So, number one, don't get shot. Number two, uh, have a plan to go push it, right? That's true, yeah, because you can't win by being passive. And I can say that easy, but Jason has been playing all weekend, and have you gotten shot by a sniper in the sniper nest? I don't know if anyone in any of my games... Oh, actually, I did. Um, And it did six damage. But that was just bad dice. So it could have been good. It, it, it could it could have been okay. For one shot. For one shot, yeah. Is one shot worth two operatives at the beginning of the game? Maybe for some teams you can get away with it. And this particular case was uh Alexa shot me with his multi melta. Shout out to Alexa. He put a he put his uh in- Inquisition servitor up top. Which actually is a fine spot, because pretty much the, the servitor gets one shot and that's it. And it had, like, good vantage over the whole field. So he was going to get his one shot and die. Uh, it was just unlucky that he only did six damage. So, yeah. I mean, use, it is very powerful, but better players will adjust. So be careful, anyone. Yes, use Sniper Nest carefully. Or don't. Power saw. All right. And it is recording. All right. And... Of day one, World Championships of Warhammer, just another Kill Team podcast here, together, but in different positions. That's true, yeah. Um, Travis is a judge, I'm playing, getting smoked by elves and blooded. You know, probably one of the more fun storylines for you. You were very confident going into blooded, but it turns out there is counterplay. Yeah, so um, my first round was against the Ratman... Uh, playing Blooded, who we did interview like a year ago. Yeah, because no. he's part of the. It was in like the spring, though, so it was is like either. It's a ways back. Yeah, it was second edition. Um, but there's some concepts that carry over, which is very clear because he, uh, he just, all of his experience in Blooded showed really well. Yeah, he's uh he's very good with Blooded, and he's had a lot of practice, and obviously a lot of growing since last year's World Championships, where he did did okay, but he. You know, it seems like he's playing very well. At the end of day one, Ratman is two and one. He is two and one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Flawless positioning. Very impressed. Never seen anything like it with with Blooded. Uh, Not getting nuts. caught out on weird angles for obscurity. Not, yep. Um, in general, it's way harder to do that on Volcus. Yes, that is definitely true. Yeah, um, and then I played my nightmare matchup twice in a row. Which is Corsair Voidsguard. And you did, you did win once. I won one of them, yeah. And I lost the other. The Into the Dark, pretty much just hyper-aggressive Reavers, and it worked. And then I did that again for my one on Volcus, but I kind of just didn't go as hyper-aggressive. And got punished. Maybe, maybe that was the mistake, because if I'm just going to sit there and be caught off guard by Power Swords anyways, why not just run in there, take heavy casualties, and uh, kill everyone on the way. That's kind of what I'm maybe leaning towards for tomorrow, but maybe that's horrible advice. There's only one way to find out, in the Crucible of War. That's true. But you're done with Corsair Voids cars, so now, conceptually, you know, you're less worried about Inquisition agents and a couple of the other teams, and those are ahead of you. 
that's true. Yeah. Uh, the other teams seemed like a better match up. Uh, but now I don't know. I'm like I'm questioning questioning everything. So I'm like maybe it makes me play horribly because I'm gonna try some new stuff. This is not really a great time to be trying out new stuff. World Championships is a big stage, you know. A lot of things that maybe work before maybe don't work here, or sometimes the things that you just need to figure out if it's going to be dice rolls or if it was strategic and tactical decision making. And it's always hard to find the balance. I do have a long history of uh, a hyper-violent play style. So if there was anywhere to try it, might as well figure out here if it's a real if it's a real thing or it's a meme. That's true. Some of the best players in the world. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, in the broad spectrum of where group stages is after the first day of three rounds of play, turns out Warp Coven and Legionary pretty darn good. Yep, top eight. There's three Warp Coven, three Legionary, a uh, Void Dancer Troop, and a High Attack Circle. For anyone who's been listening to the weekly stat show, Void Dancers, we've definitely called them out the last couple weeks. Yep. Those 70% numbers turn out probably to be real. We saw this one coming from a mile away. And you know what? They've been doing very good overall. They've got the good tools to work against Astartes. If Astartes are going to be the meta, then having the ability to just hit someone for 9 damage, very powerful. Because it means that you're probably going to win that fight. Yeah, especially if you squeak in a little chip damage here and there, and some KG hits, and non-reciprocal hits, and a little long-range shooting, and your psychic sniper shenanigans. With that, and then... Finishing someone off with that nine damage hit, you're gonna be sitting pretty. And you got eight dudes, they all have three APL, so they're pretty mobile. So they scrim well against the ten wide teams like Novitiates. Like Novitiates cannot beat Void Dancer Troop because you just die. Cause four or five with severe is it doesn't exactly. matter how much damage Novitiates do, you with five dice, you're basically guaranteed to kill a Novitiate. I think almost just like by raw math, and you got eight of them. And you have an invuln save, so even if they shoot you, there's a non-zero chance you just walk away. I did see a bunch of Void Dancer troop players playing the portable barricade, getting that three-up ignores piercing save. Pretty rude. Pretty good, yeah. Just more on the ignore piercing meta. That is that is the, the name of the game this weekend. Yeah. I mean, Phobos does it too, just with smoke grenades. That's true, because you do get like three to four smoke grenades. Yeah. Overall, day one, big fun. Lots of cool storylines out and about. Got uh, some crazy ones, some less crazy ones. And Jason, you know, how are you feeling? First uh, World Championships. Well, I am uh, I have 41 more points than I had last year. Since and I had zero uh, points last year. Yeah. You know, we'll see where I am at next year. I suspect I won't be in the headspace to be playing, but we'll see. You never know. That's true. And uh, we'll catch everybody for day two, maybe early day two or somewhere in the middle. Because you did, or you already did one interview, right? Yeah, just just one so far. Yeah. All right, listeners, we'll catch you in day two. Word. You guys, we're here. Yep. Um, we've got Eric and we've got Ben. You may recognize Ben from Battle Brothers. Oh, hey, that's me. Hi, I'm Ben. I like Kill Team and I do want to talk about it. And we also have Eric over here. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm just vibing, man. We're having fun at World Championships. Yeah, he's part of the Warp Coven crew. Um, big vibes. Uh, Warp Fire. Warp Fire. Yep, that's, uh, that's I what I meant Brood to say. Brothers, kind of the opposite of the Warp Coven crew right yep. now. <laughs> that's the opposite of the Warp Coven crew. The Warp Fire. Yep, yeah. I, I said Warp Coven and I imagined the green W. <laughs> and then I was just like, oh, I said Warp Coven because you pointed it out. Anyways, we're here. Um, we're vibing. This is day two. It's uh, after round four of pods, um, so we still have, t- what is it, two more games today or one? I'm well, already, my brain game. is scrambled. I don't yeah, even... one more game. Yeah. we got one more game today. How's everybody feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good and I'm feeling stressed, dude. Like, I'm, my record is I'm 3-1-1 right now, so I, I'm tasting hope. Mm-hmm. The, the taste of hope is on my lips, and it's kind of stressing me out. I did, there's a chance I could get out of my pod, which is stressing me out, because I didn't think I was ever getting out, but I might get out. Uh, so I'm feeling good. I'm playing legionaries, and I'm just full sending as much as I can. Like smart full sending. Like, not, I'm not being an idiot, 
I'm trying my best not to, but I'm just full sending and like trying to engage with everybody on a single turn and not drip feed threats. And it's worked out pretty good so far. But yeah, three one one, feeling pretty good. That is the ultimate way to play Warp Coven. Uh, it is just put c- six legionaries down your opponent's throat. I said yeah. Warp Coven again. You, said warp coven. you got Warp you Coven guys. on the brain, dude. <laughs> you guys, I'm, I'm broken. Sure. I'm ruined. It's I'm definitely going to happen. It's, <laughs> hey, maybe it's a good way to play Warp Coven, too. Who knows? <laughs> but for Legionary, that sure is a good way to play. Yeah. Yeah, because if you, if you send them one by one, you just get picked off. But if you full commit, it's like somebody scoring Overrun. <laughs> you can kill one of those, but you can't kill all of them. Oh, are you playing Overrun? Every single game, bro. Yeah. I've maxed it in uh, every game but one. Yeah. It's spicy. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Wait, what do you like? You seem like you'd be a real um, overrunner. You know, I actually, I'm like, my next thing is maybe Angels of Death with all chain swords as a nice relaxing cleanse. Yeah. Just put the brain on the back burner yeah. and rev up the chain swords. Um, and, but, but do contain. Mm. And then just be like, here's a wall of murder. Okay. See what happens. I don't know. Yeah. Overrun could work too. I hate the same contain, thing. Dude. And, and the teams that out activate me, I, I know everybody likes it. I hate contain, dude. Because everybody out activates me. And so, like, like I'll move up and they just like tie me up, run somebody through, like then boom, I lose my points. So uh, also yeah, like on on, on Volcus, if they win the side, like it just like depending on where it is, like and models that can abuse things and fly or whatever, it's just contained is not safe for me. I overrun. I'm I'm here to rip and tear, dude. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I've had Hell yeah. really good luck with contain, but this weekend I've been having I because we've been playing so many games, and I think it's maybe the brain fatigue, you make one mistake with Contain, then you allow them to deny it. So you have to be yeah. completely on it. And if you can manage the threat ranges and have perfect positional play, Contain is really well. Uh, a really good choice. But I've actually had my worst games with Contain uh, today. I've been getting it denied pretty consistently. And so I know at this point I need to really switch up my game plan of how I've been running Brood Brothers because I normally counter punch with anybody who's coming into my territory. But if I if I make one little positional mistake in deployment, then now I can't get enough damage through to deny it and it's just free free point denial for my opponent. Yeah. So learn it a lot. Yeah, contain can be a tough one just because of all that that stuff you said, um, and like everyone here is kind of gunning for it. It's like uh, my my game before this, so round one today, my opponent took contain, and I had plenty of opportunities to do something about it. And then I was just like, and I'm going to go ahead and move directly onto the center line, and oh, I know no. that I need to be over it, and I'm going to just in my head tell myself it's fine. And then at the end of the round, he's like, so I scored two for contain. And I was like, that you did, wow. Yeah, um, holy within the holy within yeah. stipler uh, stipleration uh, supplication. Is that the right word? Monkey shoulder. I mean, my monkey shoulder. I'm feeling yeah. great, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, the the over having to be wholly within uh, stipulation. Is that it? I don't yeah, know. It's, it's, yeah, it's stipulation. There you go. Yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm drinking the monkey shoulder. Uh, and yeah, so like it can sometimes catch you out because like mm-hmm. that's you got to really be out there. Yeah. Yeah. I like repeatedly, and then when I was, though, I did think about it, and I denied one point. I was like a half an inch out on my on my first round four from like. I was within six, but not wholly within. I was just like, my feelings are hurt. I hate this. Yeah, yeah. You have to be really aggressive to deny it. You do, yeah. yeah. Another reason I like Overrun is it incentivizes your opponent to shoot models that have already activated. And so rather than chase out the other threats, like, okay, maybe my guy who scored Overrun, he's on a two-up save, and he's like fully in your DZ, and it's going to sink you two, three activations to kill him. And so I also like that, that it just frees up my other guys to be able to, to run around, yeah. Yeah, that synergy in TAC Ops is 100% the flavor that is very consistent among people that do the best. Um, it's, I, I, you know, you, you said it, and it shows. Like, that's why you're doing so well right now, because you've got this oh, nice trying. synergy here. I'm trying, boys. I'm trying. Yep. Yeah. I mean, all, all my losses, I've done atrocious on my TAC Ops, I, so there's definitely a correlation there, right? Where when you, you don't get the consistency on the TAC Ops... Uh, I feel like in this edition, that's kind of the most of us are running TAC op primary, and when yeah, you're not definitely. firing off on the TAC ops, you're leaving five, six points on the table. You know, because if you have TAC op primary, you only even score three. You know, uh, you're scoring five points, and even worse, you know, yeah. uh, you know you could be scoring nine. So I think that's a huge part of either doing well or doing not is getting your strategy to to correlate with actually scoring your tac ops and chipping away at the crit ops and you know chipping away at the kill ops so if you can do those things 
then more times than not, you can win. Anybody want to throw any other uh, parting wisdom before we roll out for the for the moment? No. Uh, I'll just I'll just shout out the TOs. We got uh, Layla and Travis and Ben. And is, is there any other TOs? Those are the ones I know off the top of my head. Uh, they're for sure there. Uh, they're, they're Zach is listed, TOs. but I haven't seen him He's busy. Him do anything. Man. He's busy yeah, with he's, the real he's doing games. Everything, yeah, he's busy playing the real games. Yeah. Playing games. But for yeah, Ben and Travis and Layla are crushing it as TOs. And so shout out. They're killing it. Yeah, zipping around, uh, keeping the vibes high. Anything last from you, Eric? I'm going to shout out the Florida boys. Yeah, uh, the Florida crew. I suggest anybody listening, you know, if you guys get a chance, you hear about a Florida event, come on down and play with us because I promise you, uh, you will have some fun and we have some good talent. You can have some good games, but most importantly, uh, the vibes are there in Florida. So come have fun with us, guys. Heck yeah. One of the things that we chatted about in that conversation was selecting tack ops, and it is very clear that overwhelmingly the easiest one is plant beacons. Um, contain looks pretty attractive, but it, it is easier to deny unless you're super, super aggressive. I think it's the same thing that makes that shuts it down, makes it work. Like if I'm gonna play, if I'm gonna play contain. It's because I have six intercessors that are trying to land in your deployment zone and not let anyone through. Um, Which would thematically make sense for containing a threat. I'm not trying to stop you from coming over here. I'm just going to go over there, make a wall, and you're going to be stuck in a box. So that makes thematic sense. And being forced to dangle a model just to break contain, if you're not thinking about it, does suck. Yeah. Um... And, and like, if someone else is playing Contain and you play like that, it just shuts it down so hard. And if I'm going to be doing that anyways, just don't let anyone slide through and you're good to go. But, I mean, that that seems tough. Uh, that's how I, how I think I would go about it. But I think in general, it would be very exciting for someone to come up with a way to play effectively that is not just plant beacons. Um, it'll be interesting to hear from some of the top dogs. I mean, from everything I've seen, it seems like everyone's doing plant beacons. Um, but I mean, uh, Legionary can't, and they're doing really well. So um, Ben Ben said he's doing, um, Ben's doing overrun, and destroy, overrun. You know, just get in there. But he is doing the wall of six at the midline, and then pushing forward. It sounds like, or like three, and then three getting ready to take the place of those three, and just running it down mid. And you know, as a note from day one, Emily was able to take down Ace, and she did just run it down on in the dark, from what we understand. Yeah. Um, when it comes to a a little more out there tack up that I want to noodle around with, and especially because a thematic tack up is important to me, I want to play Nemesis Claw, and I don't know if this is going to be good, but I think it'll be fun. It's worth trying at least once or twice, and uh, it's, it's sort of the play with your food before you eat it play style, where the Nemesis Claw just... Charge someone, beat them to an inch of their life, implant them, and then trap them with chain snares for two points. And then the next turn, you kill your victim, charge another one, beat them to one inch of their life, and implant them. And just rinse and repeat. And it is just the ultimate, like, Tormentor's Nemesis Claw play style, uh, getting a bunch of victory points for it. That does sound like a fully thematic, cohesive plan that also uses equipment that people aren't using all that much. But you do have to play Nemesis Claw, which means you do need to fight against Legionary, which might not be the easiest right now. It's It might not be horrible, because if, if I turn off your rerolls, is, you're going to have a bad time too. Uh, and then, it's just like, hard to beat someone with an inch of their life when they can also hit you back for meaningful damage. And you're hitting on fours. It just makes your going in and stalling them out a little bit less reliable. Yeah, it'll be tough to get them to... Because you have to a a attack someone that's already activated to be do that most effectively. Um, or you could just full send it, and then when when it looks... When the, when the dice reveal to themselves that this is the one that you implant, you just do it. And then move right along. But with, like, the Screecher turning off rerolls and making people minus one to hit, and then everyone else turning off rerolls of one, and just, like, going all in on the melee, like, maybe there's a little something there. Because you don't care about ignore piercing. The the minus one to hit in melee is a little nuts, but uh, it's assumable that that's probably going to get tapped. 
I don't know. It's that's one know. of the crazy like, there's, strong there's, things of the team. Like the, the real thing right now is we have a lot of different problem spaces, and tack ups are very strong right now. But once elites kind of get toned down, maybe plant pit signal beacon will also get toned down a little bit, just because this is a little bit too easy. But it's only really easy when you're playing three APL operatives, and with six APL wides, you your opponent should theoretically see the next forward position, and you can walk your operatives into range to kind of threaten it. Or at least be whoever moves up dies. Because once you reveal the first one, the map is semi-known, at least on Vulcus. On In the Dark, it's a little cheesier because you're measuring two tokens and markers, and you can close a door and then play in the signal beacon. That that doesn't go away. Yeah, plant beacons on Into the Dark, for anyone that doesn't know, you can literally like run up to a door, plant a beacon, close the door... Uh, and then, like, counteract, plant another beacon on the closed side of the door, for example, with some real crazy nonsense. Uh, it, it's plant beacons. Nuts. Um, oh, also, I have actually seen some people asking, why is plant beacons the best? Um, why not do, like, confirm kill if you're playing recon or recover items? And the reason is because if you are... Like, even it's a little bit easier against elites, and you don't need to do mission actions. So let's say you kill an elite, they drop a token, then an enemy elite just charges on and, like, ties you up. You can't claim those points. And, like, they choose not to fight you, you can't fight because you're already activated. Those points are gone forever. So that makes it pretty easy to deny. Same with uh, recover item. If you pick up an item, and, like, you, you do a whole activation to get there, you pick it up. Someone kills you, you drop the item, you lose the points. Whereas plant beacons, f the way I do it with Phobos, for example, and I think a lot of people, it's a similar thing from what I've seen. Um, a Phobos Marine will move seven, plant a beacon for free, shoot twice anyways, ultra efficiency. That's a point that the opponent absolutely cannot deny. And there's there's not, like, surveillance... Is, is very good. Is very good, However, but it's not on that level. However, surveillance requires you to be in your opponent's drop zone. It's really only good for, it looks like from this tournament, Mandrakes and the Surveillance Grot are both pretty valid. Yeah. Well, whether or not that's enough to build a whole game plan around, when the elites are as strong as they are right now, doesn't seem like that is the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like Mandrakes could fully, like, even against elites, because you just wait for them to out-activate, you blink behind them, you surveil them, two points, you just do that every turn, easy. According to what I've seen, the Mandrakes basically just max out surveillance every game. Which, much like the Commando Grot, very similar. Yeah, that, man. Yeah, that seems even easier than Plant Beacons. It's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty powerful, so it's, it's all about figuring out what your, what your plan is. Bonus points if it's thematic. You know who else has chain snares? Mandrakes do have chain snares. Jeez, maybe I should play Mandrakes. What? Um, so we just finished round six. This is the end of the pods. Um, it's day two. Round six is done. Uh, well, it's mostly done, but th those of us that are here are done. We've got Bart, who is just crushing it with Void Dancer troops. Uh, what's your record so far? Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Bart. I'm a five and the one with Void Dancers, the clownest of clowns. Oh, jeez, that's nuts. Uh, and then we also have John over here with Can You Roll a Crit. There's one player in this event who is undefeated, and it is John. Currently, yeah. I'm, uh, I think the only other undefeated players are Dan, but he's playing his game, and Mateusz, but he's playing his game as well. So we're waiting for those results. But yeah, currently undefeated with Legionary, the most balanced team in the game. So, so fine. My Alpha Legionary doing balanced things. You know what people weren't worried about? Everyone's like, you're, you're running two to three warriors, John. That's fine. And then they're like, oh my gosh, warriors. So. Legionary warriors, perfectly balanced as all things should be. <laughs> um, well, I'm just out here slumming around in the three and three pod, but uh, it's been a vibe. Uh, it was a real mulching pit on the way up. I thought for a moment that I should be KG. That's not true. And then I was like, remember your heritage. And then all of a sudden I went super <laughs> aggro and it worked out really well. So just for anyone thinking about the meta game, I think I will be the only player in the top 16 who's not running Inquisition, Legionary, Warp, Coven or Necrons. So it's a very balanced meta, a very healthy one, and welcome to the Elite Kill Team. Finally, after so many years, I actually like this game now. Hell yeah. Uh, and, and Void Dancers, 
and you're uh, so you're just like out here killing elites, killing everybody. Like you played elites, you played hordes. Like what's what have you played so far? Yeah, so I, I played like many different teams so far, and um, I think the teams that crush me are simply not here because these are Felgo commandos and the like, and they're simply pushed out of a meta game by the league players. I'm uh, quite chuffed playing into Legionary. I think I'm like 7-0 versus them right now. Um, Inquisition, it, it should be a fairly tough matchup for them because I can play those boys for free. It's it's okay, like, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's okay. It's a nice oh, team. Geez. Please don't nerf them. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. The ploys for free is a very hard counter to Inquisition. How, how many Inquisitorial agents have you played so far? Uh, just one, just Carlos. But yeah, it was an interesting game, a very difficult one. As you can expect, at well, it's very sweaty as well, but in a very friendly, uh, let's say, yeah, setting. So yeah, so it, it was an interesting game. Difficult one, but free ploys, the fact that I have eight operatives, Dropping Dev Jester allowed me to bring more players that can double kill because Dev Jester versus a good opponent can only re reliably get one kill ever. So I really wanted to have like more options to charge, kill, and shoot. So yeah, it worked well. And yeah. Oh geez, I, I love to hear that. I, I'm a huge fan of dropping things that don't move fast enough and taking more warriors. Is this a theme <laughs> that that has ever been said by me? Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been bringing two Warriors with my Phobos, kind of been thinking about bringing three sometimes, but I, uh, despite the fact that I've been telling everyone to bring more Warriors, two or three with Elites is pretty good. Um, six with Void Dancers is pretty good. <laughs> um, John, what's your, what's your run so far? I mean, you're undefeated, like, but what was your toughest match? Oh, so, um, so I played three really tough matches. All my games have been tough, but I played... Adrian round one with his high attack, which was really tough. I managed to eke it out because he did a really good alpha and it just failed. But then I just managed to push. Like my melter killed his crypt deck in one shot and then did the rending bolt pistol and killed another Necron, which pushed me through. Uh, then I played uh, Blooded round two, who didn't know, uh, who underestimated how extraction worked. So I scored six on the primary, he scored zero on the crit op. And then I played Inquisition for the first time uh, on round three. And I, at the end of turning point two, there are only two. Inqu at the end of turning point three, there are only two Inquisition left, and I'd only lost one Legionary because uh, I'd taken three Warriors. That's murder on the dance floor. Everyone. I want to share an achievement. Actually, I faced Orion's Crude on Extraction, and I was extremely terrified of his poach, and I managed to steal his own objective <laughs> and brought it back home. So yeah, that's a huge achievement on my end here. Uh, just be aware that clowns are actually quite fast. Poach the poachers. You're just really <laughs> clowning on them out here. That's that's some real big uh, just energy. Yeah, it is. And uh, another thing is, if you don't know what to do with your counteracts, uh, just tell your opponent that you're going to jump on your forehead, and that's going to be your counteract. That's yeah. That's 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 the best idea. Very flashy. <laughs> um, also, before we head out, uh, you where do we find you on social media? Um, social media, to. yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, you can find me on Instagram, Bart and his minis with underscores, and I think this is where you can find me easiest. So I'm on Discord as well. Uh, uh, yeah, Bart and his minis, or hi, I'm Bart, also with underscores. John, and then like if you're a regular listener to just another Kill Team podcast, you you probably haven't heard of me. Uh, you know, I'm rarely on this podcast. Uh, John, I only roll sixes. <laughs> yeah, it's Please. great. I wrote my corn anointed, wrote six crits, uh, five crits into <laughs> into a flag me. Uh, yeah, I'm Can You Roll a Crit. Yeah, you just search Can You Roll a Crit. You'll find me anywhere. I, I'm everywhere. I'm like the underworld yeah, a Kill Team board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a bad disease. You can't get rid of me. And so. remember, you can always kill a Hyrotech Circle player if you can roll a bunch of crits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is day three at WCW. Um, it is the end of round seven. Um, I'm here with Alejandro, who is also playing Phobos. we got the double Phobos gang here. Uh, how's it going so far? I think it's going well. I think we have some play against the like, really tough teams, yeah. like Legionnaires or Coven. Even higher tech, I think we have some game. 
So it's and it's fun. Like it's a fun team to play. You yeah. have to think a lot. It's it punish you if you make a mistake. But I I think I'm doing well. I'm three four right now. I, I've won three games against Legionaries, Hyrotech, and Blooded, and I lost against Warp Cove and Legionaries. And I'm just I plague Marines, and I just forgot mm. the other one. But it was like a really tough yeah. elite. Also elite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. Okay, so a, a couple questions. One, of all of the meta teams, what do you think is the hardest for Phobos? It depends. Like if Legionaries takes Nargle, I think we have a really tough time because the Marksman loses damage output mm -hmm. and the Veteran also. Well, the Veteran is the one that you would use just to get the crits. Um, the special ammunition isn't worth it anyway. anyways. Yeah. The crack grenades need neither, so it's, yeah. it's really tough to, to chew it in. If they don't took that that much Nargle, I think we have some some play. I think we have some play, and then warp coven can, can be tricky, especially with the sick, and uh, the mind burn is really really hard. Uh, just to kite them, it's really difficult, especially if they go is, if yeah. they go with Sangors at at the front and then the sorcerers in the back. Yeah, the Sangors are really hard to kite them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Hyrotech Circle. I feel like is maybe my vote. Just. Like it's it's been surprisingly hard. They're super shooty. They can like dictate your movement with their version of track target. Yeah. Um, they yeet all over the place. They can take and tain. I mean, like there's it's and a lot of it is just like so unusual. It's, it's so easy to be caught off guard. Yeah. Whereas I, like Legionnaire is a little more honest. It's kind of just like you push a threat and then I try to do my shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I played two hierotics. I won one and lost one. But the one I lost against Guy Barton. Yeah. It was a really fun game. It, it went down up to two points difference. Yeah. So I think we have some game in Into the Dark because their version of track target is going to compete with yours, mm -hmm. but you but they out-activate you. So you can wait until the end to to put the, the guard on, like to have the, the guard and then shoot at the end. Yeah. So it's really like for them it's hard to push. So it's going to depend on, the, on what's the crit up and if they need to push a, a, a lot of, or if they don't. Because between the box breaker and the marksman, you have like a nice bubble yeah. of threatening. So I, I did like that, that a lot. I managed it well. I, it was at the end I, yeah. by two points. Um, but it was a really nice game. I think it's the best game I've played in, in terms of like how well we, I played and he played. Yeah. Um, so I think we have gaming into the Dark in Volkos. I think it's a, another thing, but al we also have the, our shenanigans in Volkos. Yeah. So it can work too. Yeah, so far I, um, I've i played against Corsairs twice, won one and lost one. Corsairs is a nightmare for Phobos. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, and I have also, I lost a Blooded which was surprisingly tough. He just had like amazing positioning and I like, I was going through a little period where I was like, what happens if I'm less aggressive? Not the answer. Yeah, I, I played against like, Sam from Australia, also yeah. with Blooded. Uh, and I just like stayed away from the crack grenades, the bombardier, and just to try to take the Ogreen as back as I can, only scramble him. Yeah. Um, but I think th that game went up to what tack up did, did he choose? He, he went for champion. So I just kite the ch I kited the champion all game. Yeah. And that's what the difference. But yeah. it's really tough. And the crack grenades with the blooded tokens and with the gates of the gods are really good. reliable. Mm -hmm. So I played like three games on blooded since the start of the edition. And I haven't had once uh, saved a, f a Phobos from a crack. They always do zero to uh, 10, uh, 100 to zero. In just one crack. Yeah, it's pretty. So crazy. it's really, it's really scary if they position well and they they get um, the the cracks in. It's gonna be tough. And then they have the the other bomb, the the, the tough grenade, and then they have the combat. That is also really tough to to get into. Um, yeah, I played two games against Inquisition, and uh, won both of them pretty soundly. Okay. Um, I think Phobos is very very good into Inquisition. Okay. So if if like you can't you they can't counterspell your firefight plays if your sergeant does it, and if you use no no fear for every strategy phase and then use the comms to switch it into whatever you want, they can't counterspell that either. Okay. Uh, you pop smoke so they never have a shot that isn't obscured, and you ignore all of their piercing. Okay. Um, you can stage pretty aggressively, 
And then if your Vox Breaker Omni, like, Omni scrambles someone first or you have tons of Omni scramble visibility against all their big targets, then like it doesn't matter who they denounce because all of my threats are bigger than yours. Yeah. And then you pretty much just jump in and double kill people. Like I, You can even kill the, the quest keeper with a stealth assault with just any old infiltrator in, in cursor. Yeah. So you're just like a, a warrior runs in, stealth assault kills the quest keeper, like shoots and kills the melt gun, plants a beacon for free. And then like they're already like going to be flustered after something like that and then you just like rinse and repeat and just have turn to of ultra explosion and then it's just hopeless and disgusting yeah yeah so, i think it's good I, I think we have some play on inquisition i haven't uh, get an inquisition i had an, uh, an inquisition in my group so let's see if that happens here but that's a lot of tips so thank yeah. you I, I hope i get yeah, one now there's some yeah. good there's some good <laughs> stuff in there it's like you don't even need the the knife reavers just because all of your melee is good enough to double kill everything on the team yeah. anyways. You just take the knives for the plus one yeah, the dice five and attack. that's it. Yeah. And then when they bring you down to four attacks, four attacks balanced is still just going to mulch anything you touch. Yeah, and if you're charging, you get the little five. Mm -hmm. so it's, and then still you get the ball strike yeah. twice. And if you do try to like try to bait out the the thing early that the denote or absolute authority or whatever yeah. it's called bait it out early just be like uh we just call it the no uh like deadly shots yeah. and then they'll be like oh i'll make that one go away or like guerrilla tactics and they'll be like i'll make that one go away and then and then you're good in the clear and you can do your stealth assault and if they don't then the sergeant does it and then you stealth assault for free and they can't turn that off yeah yeah that's good that's really Pretty really spicy. good i think that but for the sergeant would you think that the river will be good or you don't you just don't need it um, and yeah, it's I mean to take I've been the, doing the, the incursor. Infiltrator or the I think incursor. yeah, so like three infiltrators, three incursors yeah. is really good because like once they do go engage, they can't hide from you if you have three incursors. And then with three infiltrators you have enough omni scramble and then when you do catch someone, it's always gonna at least match their maximum denounce. Yeah. And but it's super reliable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, great. That's yeah, great. It's pretty it's pretty gnarly. Um, and then also you kind of want to wait until they, their threat is very clearly outlined before you omni-scramble someone. Because if you omni-scramble someone and they, and they dash someone else, or like if they only have one threat in range, you can omni-scramble it. And then if the dash can't get someone else in range. Um, also, if you omni-scramble someone, they can't take any actions. So against like Corsairs, for example, you omni-scramble the bird guy, and he can't interrupt you anymore. Yeah. That's a good tech. That's a good, yeah, that, that's a really good one. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. So I, I think it's fun to play because of this this kind of thing. Yeah. Even when when they when they match stuff and you're a facing a legionary or a warp coven or a higher attack. Yeah. You still have something to do. You you can play for the crit up and for the and for the attack up. Yeah. Plant beacons. It's just bonkers. Plant beacons is very good. Yeah. In, How many warriors in do you normally dark. take? Sorry. How many warriors do you normally take? I tend to take at least one, but I have taken two in in. I think in one Same. game. I've been doing mostly two, and yeah. there was one game I took one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't go out of home with other warrior, but especially into the dark, I always consider taking two. Yeah. Just because of you, the, the formation Opening action. doors exactly. is super clutch. Yeah, for higher tech, I took the, the two rivers, two river warriors, and they just yeah. helped a lot. Yeah, they're pretty yeah, they're, they're, pretty they're really good. They're really good. And it's because of the stealth assault, if mm -hmm. you get lucky, you can... Kill at ten, at ten and like it's smaller. not even that lucky. The odds are like alarmingly yeah. high that you'll just like one shot a Necron. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I took in in that case I didn't took the River Sergeant. I took uh, an Incursor Sergeant mm -hmm. just to get the Omni the, the Omni Scrambler up to two. Yeah, and it worked. It worked, but but I, that was the game I won. So it, yeah. it was it was it was nice. I, I think two words. I don't know if in Balkus, but I think it's in Balkus the river the rivers are crazy. So yeah. you being able to climb wherever you climb want and drop two. for free. It's yeah, so like any of those like L-shaped, if there's an L-shape uh, stronghold that points into the middle of the building or like the, into the middle of the rest of the kill zone, you can pretty much just non receptacle threaten the entire middle of the board. It's yeah. craziness. It's really crazy. It's really crazy. Just swooping with the big Batman vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I, I do like it a lot. And what do you, do you expect for the rest of the tournament? I mean, I'm I'm shooting for like 50% smack down the middle, so I'm on a pretty good track for that right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. You? I'm three four, so yeah. If I do a comeback today, I'm still like on my range. If yeah. I get a four four and mm -hmm. tomorrow a one one or a two zero, I'm I'm fine. Yeah, with it. there's a lot of tough competition out there. I mean, I I won't even be upset if if this was the my last win. I yeah. mean, it, it sure would be cool to win another game, but you know, it's it's been a good run. Yeah, it's been a good run. I, I think 
like for us, I come from a small scene, so a tournament mm -hmm. of more than eight games. For me, it's crazy. I, I think it's the first. I, I came to, to Worlds last year, and I, I'm feeling ti more tired today than I was what did feeling you play last, year? last year. I played Commandos. Okay, yeah. I played Commandos. Which in, in fact, I played against Travis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was nice, but I, I'm feeling like more tired in this one. Is it is like is it because Phobos has more shenanigans? It's mentally challenging. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it, that's the thing. Like the the, the the first game today's first game that was third day because they don't know when we're talking about. So the third day, the first game, I was just I played badly. That's it. Like the the worst game I, I played two, yeah. in months. And and Nick Collins, the guy, was really awesome. So he was really good. I was really bad. And then I started rolling bad, so like the mixture, but it was mostly my like my men. I, I was mentally challenged yeah. in the game. Yeah, my my round one yesterday, I really had my opponent in in the jaws of death and just fumbled super duper hard and and just like yeah. left three points off the table that were like easily there. Uh, that, that's tough. I lost my first game against Warp Coven. I lost by one because I measured wrongly a beacon. I had the bacon, I had the APLs, I had the model, and I measured it wrong in the third turn, last activation. It will be at least a tie. Mm. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough because you, you have to control a lot of things at the mm -hmm. same time. It's an elite team, that's true, it's only six models, but you have so many possibilities. You are constantly thinking on what to do, what can I do, and what is Yeah, there's so many things you gotta do. <laughs> exactly, and, and then you have, I think teams like Legionaries, for example, it's not that tough to decide if you want to go cagey or you want to go aggressive. Mm -hmm. For us, it's like a, a really hard gamble. If, if you go really aggressive and it doesn't work, it's going to punish you hard. Yeah. But if you go cagey, you lost your edge of getting crit up or, and getting attack well. So it's, it's hard. I, I think it's more like the mental charge of the team. Yeah, definitely. Because with commanders, you just go and conceal and yeah, just get up the table. Yeah, just sneak up on them and stab them. Yeah. Right now, you can take pictures in, in KT2. No, you, you can't, but... It was the same. Like, I think it's it's more fun too. I do like Commandos a lot, but I was trying to get them, but I just thought Phobos would be funnier. Yeah. Um, are you going to stick with Phobos for a while, or do you have another team in your sights? <clears throat> uh, I'm planning to play Phobos as much as I can, and I'm painting my Hunting Jaeg uh, Jaegers, so I'm maybe going to try th those. They're fun ones. And I have Blades of Cain. I, I pre-painted Blades of oh, Cain, preparing Blades of Cain. for KT3. Yeah. So I painted the whole team and I said, as soon as KT3 comes, I'm going to play Blades of Cain. Then I saw the rules, then, then I saw how they work, and I yeah. said, I, I don't want to... Yeah, they... I, I, like, all Banshees on Vulcus is surprisingly good. Yeah. Because of all the jump shenanigans, and you can just fly all over the place. And then if you match your targets right, it's like all ceaseless power swords, all ceaseless uh, rending pistols is like shockingly powerful. Yeah. Um, and then with your double fight and double shoot that you can sneak around all over the place, uh, it's crazy potent. Yeah, I, I think, and there's a guy playing only like Mono Dire Avengers 2 here. Oh, he's the guy here is playing only Dire Avengers? I saw at least two games. Oh with man, mono, I gotta check out. How's he doing? I don't know. I just saw the tables and oh, he got like he got a, a couple of Dire Avengers, um, but it's tough. It's tough. It's the same thing with Phobos. Like if you if you get it wrong, you're gonna lose. That's it. Uh, it looks like the Blades of Cain player is two, two, and three. Oh no, two, three, two. Two, three, two. Yeah, that's, that's very respectable. I don't know if he <laughs> plays it, it, that that team all the games. I don't think so because it's really hard to win with that. Um, but he could. Two three two is like almost perfectly balanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he just <laughs> need one more win and one more draw, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and then the tenth, he he can concede and go home with three to three, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Um, well, any final uh, tips or shoutouts before we go? Nah, just a shout out to Kill Team Mexico. My, my team is Obsidian War Warlords. Yeah. And we're playing in Mexico City. If anyone can uh, wants to catch a game there, just call us over. We're in, in most of the discords. So yeah. if anyone wants to, to catch a game in, in Mexico City, just tell us. We also have players in Guadalajara, in Monterrey, in Merida, in, in Cancun. So if anyone wants to play yeah, pretty well at the beach in the Caribbean, you can do oh, it. If you want to go to the mountains in Mexico amazing. City, you can do it too. It's a gorgeous country, and also a shout out for Colombia. I'm, a Col I'm actually Colombian. I live in Mexico, 
but I'm actually Colombian and the people from Colombia is awesome. They have a really great scene. Yeah. It's really dynamic. They, they got two players uh, this year. Last year they were zero. So it's really nice. It's really nice. The community is growing a lot and they're great. So also a shout out for, for the people in Bogota and for Beth Hammer in the yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for popping in today. Yes, thank Enjoy you so much. Enjoy the rest of you. the tournament. Yeah, same to you. Have a nice nap. All right. This is what, what, what round was that? Was that eight? Round eight. <laughs> we just finished round eight. Uh, all uh, three of the Phobos players. Um, we've got Matthew over here as well as Tom. Uh, we're just kind of geeking out about Phobos right now. Um, well, how's you guys' record so far? Uh, so I won five games and lost three so far. Um, this is my first experience coming to such a, a world-class event. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad player here. All of my games have been absolutely incredible. I think the most memorable ones have been the ones which have been so incredibly tight. So Adrian has just beaten me with his Hyrotech Circle uh, by one point. Um, I beat Alexa by one point, uh, beat his Inquisitor Inquisitorial agent earlier today. And yeah, just those games where you know the exact decisions that you made to either secure or lose a victory there. Um, absolutely amazing to be able to look back on. Matthew, how was yours? Yeah, uh, good. It's been tough. As Tom says, these are some of the best players I have ever played with, but also some of the most fun games oh, I've ever played. Yeah. Um, and it. I'm used to playing like my local meta, and these guys are a high standard. You know, I've got, we've got Ryan Slater is in is in my um, club. There's four other guys from my club here, so I'm normally used to playing a high standard, but it feels like I've leveled up coming into this place. So my what's what what am I on? So four losses, four wins. Um, it's been it's respectable, but it's been every match has been tough. There's never been a walk in the park well, with my anyone. Brain is mush at this point. There's so much concentration to you cannot make any mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some some of the some of the teams I thought would be a walkover like crew have literally had my pants down, and then some of the ones I thought would be really tough like legionary I've managed to scrape a win. Um, and it, it's interesting with Phobos I find it's such a tactical team absolutely yeah yeah you don't have the damage reduction available to some of the other uh, or damage enemies. spike yeah and you don't have the spike damage either no no it's all about volume isn't it yeah uh, and every single activation has to matter yeah even if that's skipping an activation but, but forcing your opponent to put themselves in a difficult situation like every decision has to be considered have you guys had any, had any particularly good patient ambushes because I, I used one yesterday which I think was absolutely clutch and it was another very cagey turning point too and I think um, my opponent and I were waiting for someone to make the first move and I think we both had calculated that whoever made the first move was going to be at a disadvantage and yeah using patient ambush at the right moment to then yeah, basically force someone to take that action and then be able to punish it afterwards yeah that was uh, that was the game winner there that, that's been that's been uh, essentially two of my games just just to force them to, to actually make a move and put themselves in an exposed position does that fit your playstyle as well you know, I had a bunch of practice games where I was using Patient Ambush and it was very helpful. And then, like, one of the games that I lost here was against Blooded. And, and then I was just like, you know what? I just, like, remember, remember your roots. And then I was like, you know what? I used to not use Conceal Orders. Why don't I just push insanely aggressively? And now I've been doing that again. And there's, like, there's no more room for Guerrilla Tactics. There's no more room for Patient Ambush. It's just, like... Speed blitz come just like ripping out of the woods and just start like chopping people up, and it's weirdly like a huge amount of melee. I mean, especially like I played Inquisition three times now, and it's just run screaming and and <laughs> chop everyone. It's uh, it's madness. Like we both just omni scramble each other, but like if yeah. you have two threats against me and I have five threats against you, yeah, yeah, then yeah. it's just like you, and then uh, and I've got the bubble that turns off your rerolls in the heart of everywhere you want to fight then you just have very unreliable attacks and then like you've like the inquisition with the with the reduced damage uh with the minus one attack you just run them with your five attack knives your lethal five um you use and they shall know no fear at the start of the turn use comms to flip it to lethal assaults yep. the sergeant goes in first stealth assault they can't deny it because it's free and then you're just like you're running and like they can't counterspell anything. You're just mulching everybody. Like you've got smoke everywhere. Like they never have a shot that's not obscured. And it's just like absolute, just like bloodbath, 
explosion of violence and it's beautiful. What you just said there um, about changing the order against inquisitorial agents is so important. I made a mistake in my game against inquisitorial agents this morning where I had that plan where, okay, you're going to play a ploy which maybe you're not particularly attached to, but it's quite nice to have, and then use the comms to flip it in the middle of turn to avoid absolute authority. It's, I don't know whether any other teams have got that tech to get around it. I haven't even thought of that. I've not played Inquisition, though. Yeah, because you, you want to make sure that they're not going to turn off deadly shots on the wrong turn or lethal assaults or whatever yeah. the most important thing is to you. Um, yeah, but it's a way around it. Smart. Very smart. Yeah, it literally turns into, like, they can't absolute authority a single thing you do if you because just you have one clutch ploy per turn and you just you switch them with the comms and then like the the sergeant pretty much the only time I use a firefight ploy is pretty much either a critical shot from the sergeant yeah. or a lethal assault from the sergeant and either one it's free so they can't yeah. yeah yeah getting a stealth assault off of the sergeant like that is fantastic yeah I mean what I was quite surprised about and I hadn't really planned on using the model that much was actually the medic to just soak up some damage and actually can heal himself with his medic ability and, and, on, on and on counteract so you can go and soak up so much damage like I've run through a mine to set it off and then just going well that didn't happen I need to get some medic tips from you two then because right so when I painted this team and I made a display base in the summer I had 10 models for the previous edition which was what I wanted and with the new edition it's like right I need a Vox Breaker and I need another Reaver so now I have to basically leave two models off the display base the medic has not been on the display base because I haven't been using it um, but yeah I think you know getting those plays um, and especially if you're doing something like tanking a mine and then using the medic to heal yeah. back up. I mean, yeah, that seems like a really solid move. You've got to do stealth assault. I know he's not got the damage output, but if, yeah. you, if you know you're going to take um, at least one hit, yeah. or maybe even two, yeah. you can then just erase them. Yeah, and you've got a lethal five bolter as well, so yeah, yeah you can still get some work done at range. Uh, well, yeah, I did, like, some of my medic tech was on my... Uh, infiltrator skew, I took all the specialists. Like, I dropped the marksman so I could take the veteran, and then I just had Omni Scramble 6. This was in some silly business games, but it was just like stage very, very cagey and try to wait them out. Like, that's what I did, like a patient, uh, patient ambush. One of the, one of my opponents, uh, I th maybe maybe that was I don't remember who I was playing against. Maybe it was Corsairs or maybe it was Void Dancers. But then he like moved dash, takes a pistol shot. Um, then I just like heal him with the medic. Uh, sh double shoot and gorilla tactics back to conceal and like the Vox Breaker turns off his rerolls as he gets close enough to like hit anyone that you, they want to so there's like no one can creep in on there at all I, I found the, uh, the the passive turn off rerolls in the Vox Breaker was absolutely a, it was clutch for me in ITD where I was, I was basically boxing off a room and for teams that rely on ceaseless and relentless, absolutely, it just closes them down. Obviously, they can still have a good role, but if they don't, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I had the thug charge me, and he ended up parrying me, parry, doing two parries, so he survived because he couldn't re-roll and, and did no damage. And then I just retaliated and killed him. Yeah. Situations where the Vox Breaker dies early, they're so horrible. So my game against Adrian, he did some incredible work with uh, magnify shots and getting balanced and ceaseless on them, uh, including turning four misses into something ridiculous which just wiped out an operative. If the Vox Breaker was up, then yep, that's not happening. That's a totally whiff shot. I also find the Vox Breaker is probably the most intimidating model for other teams on the table. I find everyone focused and plays yeah. everything around that model. So even if you're not really that reliant on the seek light that he's projecting, or, or even those re-rolls. Use it as a distraction. Yeah, let them pull them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a, here's a funny thing. There, there's been a handful of people that came up to me throughout this tournament. They're like, "Oh, I'm paired against Phobos. What do I, do? what like, what do I watch out for the most?" And I was like, "Watch out for the Vox Breaker. He's a spooky guy." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think everyone, uh, Vox Breaker and Marksman. Again, the, everyone fears the Marksman mm. because he hits on twos, but it is. Everything's three, four. Yeah. Actually, I think one of my biggest learnings um, from this tournament is that Vantage is often a trap for the marksman. Um, you can get some 
you can get some good track targets out against less experienced players they kind of freak out about track targets against more experienced players they're like yeah fine that's a risk I'll take one shot whatever and then you're up there and then you've got to like climb over the ramparts drop down then you can't really sort of get more mobile yeah I found um, having the the Reaver with a bolter was the best opportunity to get right up to the top vantage on Volkus and get um, get some easy shots. But what was interesting, I was playing um, an excellent player uh, who was running Wormblade, and he put a mining laser up on the highest point on Volkus. And my marksman was on the ruins, um, and I was on conceal, but obviously get, he can still shoot me. And um, I had a smoke up as well on track target. And he thought, I'll just give it a go. And I think he realized his mistake once the dice hit the tray. Um, because all, what looked like a good roll suddenly did zero damage. And I could just flip to track target and just delete him off the top vantage. And it was quite a, a key moment in that game. Yeah, a seven wound model doesn't stand a chance against your track target, does it? No, especially on a five up save. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's game over. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolute murder. I totally agree with the, the Reaver for the tall vantage. If I'm going to have anyone that's going to like be a vantage shooter, it's 100% the Reaver, because he can get up there and he can get down. And like also, while you're up there, you can shoot twice and then flip back to conceal. Yes. And like he'll be accurate to balance. You give him the piercing. Like It's it's gnarly. Yeah. Have you ever used surveillance with him? Because that's something that I kind of want to try. I've chickened out on it every time. Like, it sounds good, but then it's, like, on a couple of the maps, I'm like, if they get there first, I think I'm cooked. So I think I just stick with the with the beacons. Right, yep, yep. Because if you can get up there, then you can use your free mission action for surveillance, still double tap and flip back to conceal. It seems really tempting. Yeah. I mean, interesting talking about the secondaries you can take. So I found what was really good into Elite was always Implant. Uh, especially what is uh, a tough to, to chip down. I've always got five or six on my secondaries. I always just think it's better to kill them. I, I think I I finished my last game against Legionaries with three Marines to their two, yeah. and I'd implanted them all with a double shoot. If you're not gonna, if you know you're not gonna kill them, you yeah, that's fair. Yeah, okay. You you may as well if let you're one taking go. a bad shot. Yeah, yeah. You may as well let one go. Yeah. And then if I'm playing uh, Horde, plant beacons it suddenly switches on that fear that if they don't start moving forward, you're just going to keep adding and adding and adding those points. Like it's, it's a real pressure point on, on the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm worried we're giving away all of the Phobos secrets now. Yeah. We should probably switch the microphone off and, until then, after tomorrow. and then talk about the really yeah. juicy stuff. The final, this episode comes out on Monday, so... There will be all the. I mean, I've I've been telling my secrets all along for years. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is what I do. What I would love, like everyone always talks about, what's the the the, the, no worries, the, the best um, the best play that you've done. But what I would love to know is what was the most ridiculous play you did, or what play did you do, and actually it just completely backfired. So I always think they're fun. Oh, anything involving CP re-rolling a defense dice. Uh, yeah, that, that has never worked out for me in this tournament. I've probably done it half a dozen times and regretted it every single time. Uh, let me think about a bigger play, though. I've got one which, again, on, on reflection, was dumb. And I'll put it down to the fact I was very tired. And also, and I, just, I decided I was, was going to play like you for one activation to be very aggressive. And I decided to charge a legionary chosen on seven wounds, I could get off the stealth assault. And I thought, I really only need the two first hits. If I don't get a crit, maybe yeah. one more. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's dead. I rolled three hits. Even with my balanced, I rolled three normal hits. No crits. I hit him for six. He parried me because he had rolled three... Four crits and a hit, I think. Enough to kill you. So he parried me and just deleted me and then revived back up to seven wounds. It's like I just it's threw just my model away for no obsessive. reason. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, I won that game and it was, nothing was reliant on it, but I just got greedy, stupid, and bloodthirsty. Um, but it was funny nonetheless. I'm guessing you had already used your purity seal? Uh, yes, I have. I, and I, I use that. Well, every turning point. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, having yep. having some tools to add a bit of reliability makes the team so much more lethal than it used to be in the previous edition. 
Purity seal. Don't leave home without it. Yeah. That's the I take all of the Phobos equipment every game, and like I hardly ever take any extra equipment. I mean, I've noodled around a couple times with the mine, but it's like it never really like means anything. It's just like the Phobos equipment is good enough, and and there you go. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah I'm pretty much always the Phobos group. Um, Apart from um, into the dark and maybe a couple of light barricades. And if they can switch off AP, I'm sorry, switch off piercing, yes. then don't bother with your special ammunition. Although sometimes I think it's worth it to make them spend the points on it. Um, okay, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought about that. Yeah. But then sometimes the, the mix of operatives do, does that. And sometimes it's actually quite nice against Warp Coven to almost bait them into not doing it and then punishing that. Because I'm always taking at least one Reaver, I'm taking the Marksman. So you've got two sources of piercing there. Um, normally, yeah, probably the Reaver Sergeant as well. Can I ask, right, do you, if you're going up against a team that's good with melee, do you take combat blades to try and have that extra attack to parry them back? What I've found is yeah. every time I've taken it, I, I probably, even if I've rolled well, I don't really get to use all of my, I don't get to resolve my dice before I'm gone. So wherever I've got four or five, it probably didn't really matter. I think it depends on whether you actually find a need for another piece of equipment. If you think that, like, barricades or something is going to be important, then go for it. But otherwise, I think it's, it's a good backup to have. Because if there's ever a situation where there's a model which looks vulnerable because it's already taken a number of wounds, and then you're in that stealth assault territory where you could reliably kill them, nice to have that reliability of five dice rather than four. Yeah. I think for me, the, the one thing I always try and remember in every single game is I've, I need to play the uh, I need to play my strategy. It's not just about getting kills. Yeah. Because I can sometimes be pulled, like I did with that um, chosen. I can be pulled into the the bloodlust rather than thinking tactically, and that that could have cost me my last game because I was in my mind I was thinking I can get a charge off. I can fight uh, the salvages on one wound, so he's gone. I can shoot another on two, he's gone. Um, and that's, that's used up everything I've got. Whereas actually, I could have moved, denied them contain, yeah. hatchway for and shot. Yeah. And I think if, it, if, if you don't just check yourself for a moment, it's very easy to think, get, get that charge in, but just focus on your strategy. Yeah, you have to restrain yourself. And, you know, I know I've got the blood angels and they should be just, you know, bloody. Yeah, thirsting for blood. But uh, yeah, you have, to, you have to try and rein that in. <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, any final shout-outs before we run along? Oh, um, yeah. I'm, I, I want to shout out like everyone who's travelled over from Britain for this because they have been awesome. Um, coming into this is it's really intimidating. Um, I only won my golden ticket seven weeks ago, so this is all like the idea of like travelling to the United States to play with toy soldiers is yeah it's a very new idea to me but the support from everyone in the um yeah everyone who's come over from the uk in terms of their, their advice from people who've been over here before uh, or yeah people like matt who haven't been here before as well it's been absolutely fantastic so yeah huge thanks to all of them uh, but also huge thanks to my friends back home who have been giving me advice um and just yeah emotional support in in something because yeah these games are incredible um, incredible opponents both in terms of their tactical ability and also just as people and having a really good time but it's exhausting it's really exhausting yeah I think I'd like to give a shout out firstly to Nuts Kill Team is the club I'm in uh, Jason Zamet who runs that runs a huge amount of tournaments consistently pestered me until I actually knuckle, like showed up and started playing some games and the, the whole club so welcoming. We've got, we got about five of us from the club are there. So we've got Ryan Slater, Matty G behind me, Chris Scott Bloor, who's currently my uh, my roommate with sleepovers over here in Atlanta. Um, they're just it's an awesome bunch of guys. I think lastly, I, I probably want to thank my wife, who's been very patient with me coming out here, but I do feel like it might be a patient ambush. And there'll be, there'll be something that I have to do when I get home to make up the fact I've just disappeared for the best part of a week. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on, and good luck on the future rounds. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. We're here. It's the end of the whole event. All 10 rounds are done for some of us. Um, we've got Liam over here, and we've got Kwa across the table here. Um, what, how's everyone feeling? Uh, good. Finally finished uh, game 10. 
Uh, looking to do something else that isn't play Kill Team. Qua, cool. how'd you do? Uh, finished with 5-5. My uh, last two games were tough. Uh, previous world champion and uh, Jeshua from the Kel family was fun. So, re respectable scores for me, I, I feel, so it was good. Yeah. Well, um, you were playing Void Dancers? Yes. Yeah. Um, what was it your favorite play, whether it was yours or your opponent's? Favorite play? What would it be? Yeah, so... Um, Brandon, uh, I think kiddo, I think the blood, blood blood player, his for, he like lost a flank with his Ogren and uh, trench trench uh, sweeper. He just lost that flank, and for some reason his medic just just claimed that right side by like rolling like like triple crit to hit on like my gunner and player, and I was like, what is happening? I like block it. He like does it again, and then he has like all his things. He kills the player. And I think I spent like a CP, like a domino field, and then he, he, he did it. He did end up losing that side, but just seeing that that, that random medic just murk him was just amazing. That was like my favorite play. He almost pulled it back. He almost tied it too. So, wait. So did you end up? You said you tied that game? No, I, uh, I ended up winning that game. But uh, he could have tied it if uh, there was another interaction where. He needed his leader to kill my player on another side in ITD. He like just whiffed it, and then Sagarax kicked in, and then that was the rest she wrote. So he uh, did a he unfortunately did like a bit of mispositioning in the beginning, which costed him the center, which was a massive swing, and then he somehow just literally picked it back up by killing like five clowns in freaking thirty point three, and I was like, this man might. Even come back and I was just like calculating out everything so it was a wild game wild game pair game it does sound like a wild game um, Liam uh, first off do you want to shout out your favorite play oh, it was certainly when Chris from Nottingham uh, and his Plague Marines uh, managed to get me with not one but two four man blasts on ITD with that uh, that blight grenade uh, to just to seven operatives gone uh, and uh, that ended up with a with a tie game, uh, really close. Uh, I had three operatives left at the start of turning point three, uh, but Plan Beacons, man, that's all you need. Plan Beacons is really good. Um, you had also just before we started recording, chatted a little bit about some crazy tech for Inquisition into Mandrakes. Uh, you want to run through a little bit of that? Yeah, man. So last game was against Felipe uh, and his Inquisition. Uh, really good die. Uh, but first time this tournament that I brought Exaction Squad as the Auxiliaries. Um, There's a really nice uh, play where you can just uh, run a Subductor up with the Mystic buff and put the Servo Tome next to him. Uh, and the dude's rocking four dice, guaranteed hit or guaranteed crit. Uh, and if anyone attacks him, they're only rolling three dice. Uh, and if they don't roll three hits, uh, they get parried out instantly from fight first, uh, and I can just do what I like. Uh, and it is just an immovable object for Mandrakes. Uh, so you combo that with some stun grenades, and you just have an unlimited amount of control uh, in that matchup, I think. That's totally bananas. Um, uh, anyone want to out, call out any other specific secret tech, either one of you? Uh, give a thumbs up if you're ready for a secret tech for your faction. We just kind of chatted about that. Um, if you've got something else you want to throw in, let me know. Uh, Qua, do you have any awesome secret tech you want to share? Uh, secret tech. Uh, I'll have to think about that. Um. The one thing that I sort of discovered throughout this event is this, like, smoke grenade elite creep where you move dash somewhere, you pop a smoke grenade, and then when you counteract, you steal another inch, and you stay in the smoke the whole time. That is uh, <laughs> kind of insane. Yeah, Qua, what you got? So the, uh, on some maps, especially ITD, you can take the heavy barricade on uh, a zone where it's just, just a lip, and you can put your shadow seer on it and like see over it. So you're gonna scan the field safely, and seek light never hits you because you're in heavy. 
and it's like a perfect staging point for most maps. So I love to take that. If you have like a big room, especially the center room, um, then you can hit the center from charging or even mind bolting. So it's fun. Yeah, with the uh, you said with the uh, the psyker for yeah. the mirror of minds. Yeah, just because they're so tall, so yeah. they can see just over it. So you can just like perfect line of sight. Same thing with the death chest. You can just go behind it, see it. So yeah, it's fun stuff like that. That's the spicy one. Alexa just walked up. Alexa, do you hey, want to say up, something dog? in the pod? Uh, this is really fun. I think I might be second overall because my painting is sick. Yo, yo, yo. Hey. You can be a gamer and a painter. Look at that. That's true, uh, which is apparently not me. I mean, I'm just very bad already. But what's your what's your run overall? 6-4. Uh, oh, I yeah. got sent to Phobos Jail Day 3. <laughs> and the Phobos just dodged all the melters like Neo from the Matrix. Um, other than that, Warp Covenant Cooked, Inquisition of Cook. I didn't even play any legionaries. What the hell's going on? I didn't even play any warp coven. I just That's crazy. I just ran in. I, put, I ran into all the Inquisition. Oh my god! You did. You gunned them down. You, Jason's <laughs> five boss, just like ran down every Inquisition player at this tournament. He was just like, "What? You're a top three? Sorry, no, I didn't hear you." <laughs> the the Phobos Inquisition roadblock that is uh, six dudes who can all double kill your eleven operatives. Uh, and and they're all they halfway up the board in smoke grenades. Uh, and if that melter with no rerolls yeah, like, uh, doesn't kill hey, the Phobos, I had uh, you, you, the game just ends. That's true, yeah. I had rerolls for one. Sometimes. Sometimes. Dude, most, you, most, when you're, you were running at me, and, and I was like, I could just walk away, and then nothing happens, and then I shoot you. And then I was like, that's how losers think. And then I walked up to you, and I lost. <laughs> it was like, when we kicked off the game, we had both just came from, like, the cages thing ever. And you were like, man, in my last game, no one died in Turning Point 2. I don't want that again. Yeah, I was, and like, then I was like, I could do this again. I and then I was like, to. you know, that's a great point, because my last one happen. was super cagey. We were playing on the same map, and I was like, you know what? Let's, smoke, let's, let's just smoke. see what happens. I was like, full sand, move 10 inches, pop smoke. And I was like, all right, let's go, shooting wall. Thing. And then we just, like... Threw it to the dice gods and <laughs> it was a great time. <laughs> it was bananas. It was insanity. How's the subductor? I didn't use him. Oh. Oh, I ran exact. Look, here's the thing. People are saying like just nerf Caskin and position will be fine. His action squad are just also very cooked. Um, the what's his name? Two sources of ignore obscuring is real and and seek light on top of that is. Uh, really really good at controlling the game and then you've got the free mission you action you can do a 5 APL activation as inquisition exaction because you've got a guy who has a free mission action and he has the servo skull the malicator so yes. so on ITD so, like, claim, you can, claim the point and like plant a so, so what you can do like on ITD you open a door you move you shoot someone in the face with your shotgun you take their point and then you plant a beacon <laughs> and then you go Anyway, I've got 10 more operatives left. <laughs> the thing about Exaction is that their support operatives are also just rocking 3 plus 4-4 four, four shotguns. Uh, and when you drop Quarry on top of that, something that just makes them a better output than Exaction Squad. I think they're uh, ceaseless now. Oh, no, yeah, they're they're balanced. Balanced. Yeah, yeah, So you've just got uh, 3 plus ceaseless 4-4 four, four shotguns. You'll just start picking up elves. That's really good. You'll pick up anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything that's not like a 3 up save is terrifying. Even 3 up saves yeah, are like, I, man, I, if yep, I fail yep, two yep, saves, yeah, I, yeah. I die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a rough time. Yeah. Um, anyone else want to shout out? Do any other secret tech or shout outs before we oh, run oh, along? Oh, if you want to be disgusting on ITD, okay? Any 3 APL team, you can kind of just trail most, most of you 3 APL. You toss a smoke gun to a point as like your last activation. Like if you have counteracts, right? You have less activation in your point. You toss a smoke gun to a point, you walk onto the point, you go on guard in the smoke. If someone walks up to you they, to within two to take the point, you're no longer at smoke, so you just blow them up. And then you counteract and you go on guard again. And then they have to walk up again, and then you blow them up again, and then maybe the third operative can shoot you. <laughs> you gotta turn a lot for that. Also, uh, Travis is probably gonna talk about this at length, uh, but uh, jumping is just the best part of Kill Team now. Uh, this game is now uh, like Mirror's Edge. Uh, you can just just get movement out of nowhere. Um, wave dash all over the place, wave jump over dash blinds, all over jump the place. Over the homies. I spent an hour last night talking to Travis at the bar just about jumping. Just only about jumping. This is this is the game. It's wave dash team. Uh, Volcus is just a parkour house. Uh, you the floors on Volcus are three within three inches of the of the ground, the, the first floor. So you can climb from anywhere. Which means you can jump from anywhere. I'm here to jump. This is a jump team now. I'm going to play Elves. I'm going to play Hand of the Archon. And I'm going to get 
plus one APL, and I'm going to move dash jump, plant beacon. Also, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some crazy... Have you done any crazy jump tech with uh, Void Dancers? I know about... Uh, um, not necessarily, but I did... Uh, I found out a crazy warp coven tech that was uh, probably going to get nerfed, actually, so it immediately changed. Along with the rest of the team. Yeah, along with the rest because apparently it was ruled at uh, this event where... Uh, fly is not considered a move action, so you could counteract fly through things as a warp coven, six inches, and just 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 like do a crazy mobility through a sorcerer. So, yeah, corsairs can do that too. the The shade runner can counteract like slicing attack someone or like do the blink charge. Like hyrotech, hyrotech, like can do that. The chronomancer, like uh, any teleport. So that, that might be changed, but that's like, an, like a crazy tech you can do as a counteract, especially with elites. The Chronomancer counteract slingshot teleport someone. I wouldn't be surprised if that stuck around, but the other ones are kind of insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, especially when uh, I, I didn't see it with uh, mine because Psychomancer just hates elves, so that's a thing. But uh, Chronomancer, they have crazy plays. I imagine it probably happened where you just... Do the guard ploy, you whip the guy up into like death mark into someone's face and just delete them. So I actually, I actually think uh, I I haven't had to deal with that yet because Inquisition just completely shuts down the death mark guard play because you have to. So uh, the thing I learned this at the tournament is that to go on guard as the death mark, you have to be concealed. Uh, and so if they activate on concealed, and then they go to spend the strat, you just say no for a CP with absolute authority yes. and then they're stuck with one less ABL and on conceal uh, so hope, fortunately it wasn't an issue for me but yeah slingshotting on a counteract a uh, guy from the other side of the map if you spend the CP to make it infinite range you can just select anyone on the board that you can see uh, and just, just picking him back up like a Pokemon you just recall uh, very fun yeah, yeah, just zap him from anywhere and then put him within six is pretty insane. Uh, I, that was my, my last game against Hyrotech. I was I was asking all the questions about it because I was like, this is going to get insane. And we, we we had all of the nonsense that you could ever hope for. And he's like, oh, I don't use that ploy. And I was like, you're probably about to. <laughs> just like come screaming into the room with like popping smoke grenades, trying to do the same thing I did to Alexa. And then he's like, oh, I think I do need to zap him in here. And I was like, you absolutely do. And we just had like the... I'm guarding, you're guarding, we're both guarding, we're both trying to do uh, ignore obscuring angles on each other, and it was just like absolute craziness. Well, the, the other bit of jank that is uh, that is ITD guarding now, cause counteract doesn't count as an activation, and guarding only triggers during uh, your opponent making ending an action during their activation. Uh, if you've got a guy trapped in melee, they can't even guard to prevent, like, to shoot you after you get out of melee. Um, so definitely something to watch out for now. That actually came up in the very same game I was talking about where I was out activated and he was guarding. And then so I was like, "You now you can't guard against me because I'm on counteract. And then like when I, when I kept like it, guard shot him when he moved someone else, he couldn't guard against it. And then it came to my counteract and then I shoot someone again and he couldn't guard it or counteract against that. And it was just like, this was like 5D, like laser chess through space, where like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who gets priority? Who's, who's at the top of the stack? And then uh, what triggers what is uh, it's a big part of, of Guild Theme 3 now, I think. Yeah, we really, really got into the weeds with just crazy rules interactions in that game, and uh, it was phenomenal. I think that's a lot of the World Championship here. It's, there's a lot of people walking around just looking at how rules are interacting and seeing if things need to be changed and what, like, what, uh, what someone who has read maybe too much of the rule book uh, has figured out uh, doesn't work or works a bit too well. Um, it's been really good to see, uh, especially with like the, the three monthly uh, data sites, you know. Uh, the game's in an odd place, but I think this is going to give a lot of good information for where to go. Yeah, definitely a lot of zany games. Um, cool. Well, thank you guys for joining. Uh, safe travels, and any final shout-outs? Uh, shout-out to Emma over at uh, Hillbillies. Uh, she does great events in Sydney if you're looking for monthly tournaments. Heck yeah. Uh, shout-out to Regina Kill Team. So that's uh, where I'm at on the west side of Saskatchewan. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, thanks.